Hi there, Cheryl here. And you know what? I broke my my New Year's resolution and I went out shopping on AliExpress. Um I got a lot of stuff, but you know what? Let me tell you, I I spent $26.83. Let me show you what I got. All right, I'm going to be using this die in in the card today. And this has has um has happy mothers day, birthday, fathers, and it has some funny little flowers, a leaf and for some reason a a, a pineapple. I'm not sure why the pineapple was there, but I got it for the the words in it. So I got that. I got these stencils which will fit in my Spellbinders um, vignettes. Oh, that's not one that will fit. They fit the um, Spellbinders vignettes. They're 3D things where it's like seven layers um, deep. Uh, let me show you one of them that I'm, I used Okay, here's, I use this to make a box, but it's, it's, um, it's actually t made to have, have like s seven layers. <laughs> and in addition to these, I got a bunch of stencils or masks. Uh, it seems like the craft world calls them masks. But I got this, this one, and I got this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So, so I think I did pretty good for only spending, what was it I said, twenty, twenty six dollars and eighty three cents. Excuse me. I have a bit of a, a cough, cold thing going on. So I hope I don't I don't cough too much during the video. Here's, here's some of the things that I've I've done just playing around with my stencils just to see what I could do with them. So anyway, I I broke my New Year's re resolution and and I'm not sorry. <laughs> oh, I wanted to show you this one too. This is look at this. This is a pretty nice little border um, set. Okay, here's the card we're going to do today. And let's see, what all do we need? We need some Whisper White cardstock. I've got I've got these stamped out already um, on on the thick Whisper White cardstock and. Let's see, this one came from was Heartfelt Creations. Let me get it out here so I can show you the... Uh, here we go. It's from the Lush Lilacs and Umbrella Spray stamp and die set. And um, you could substitute any nice little swirly leaf thing that you like for the background. But I had that and so I'm using it. And my flowers came from the Floral Fashionista stamp and die sets. So, I'm also going to be using um, the 3D Petite Floral Shaping Mold. And let's see, what other papers do we need? There's more, more of the Whisper White. And then the card base is it's for a 5x7 card, so... You need one 10 piece, 10 by 7, and then scored and folded at 5 inches. And then we're using um, Bermuda, the Bermuda Bay. Let me check my inks. Nope, it's Coastal Cabana. We're using Coastal Cabana and Basic Black on our cards. I already showed you the dies we're using. And then... From this stamp set that I picked up last year, year before, 
It's from these people, MSE, My Sentiments Exactly. It's on Amazon that I found it. And I got the Mother's Day set and the Father's Day set. And they have some really nice um, sentiments on them. Uh, I don't know if there's too much going on. You can't see what's on there. But it's a lot of nice Mother's Day and Father's Day sentiments. So I'll be using that. Then from Stampin' Up, this Big Shot uh, embossing folder. This is the Scattered Sequins one. I've used that in the background here just to add a little something something to the background. Uh, I'm also using the Heartfelt Creations frame, frame of Card Leafy Borders. That's these around the outside. I colored my flowers with my ink tense pencils. Now you can color them in with anything that you darn well feel like using. Use markers, use pencils, use watercolors, whatever. I'm using these. And inks. So we're using um we're using the um Tuxedo Black Memento ink. I'm using I use Sahara Sand to stamp my little leafy background here. And the flowers themselves I stamped in just bait in the um, Tuxedo Black. I use the Sahara Sand on this one. And we'll be in so we'll be using Sahara Sand, um, Coastal Cabana, that's going to be our blending thing, and then Granny Apple Green for the leaves themselves. I've got a bunch of other stuff here. Let's see, I've got some scissors, um, because I use those to cut foam strips, because we're popping this up. So I've got strips here for my border and I've got just a little one here to put behind my leaves. I have... Why do I have my sprayer out? I think I had this out for something else. Anyway, I'm using my... Um, I have a blender pen out too. You know, I've, I'm getting projects all piled over top of each other here. Um, I used my aqua painter. I used um, a Stampin' Right marker, Berry Burst, to give a little color to these. There's some little little flowers here that on this spray. But if, if you're not using this one, then you probably won't need the Berry Burst. Um, I used, this is from... Um, this is at Spectrum Noir. I got a this the sparkle pen, and I got a set of three in clear because I figured, why do I need all different colors? Because I can watercolor with my pen. So instead of using my Aqua Painter, I can use this. I can have any color I want in the whole world that I can get an ink for, and use or a watercolor or even probably you could probably use acrylics too but anyway I can use any cut I can make it pretty much any color I want and have sparkles and just use this instead of an aqua painter so that's how I justified buying that <laughs> so I have a sponge dauber I'll need that for my leaves and then I use some of my nouveau my glitter drops and oh this one says crystal drops but it says glitter drops on the side okay this one's strawberry sh or sherbert sherbert shimmer and this one is dazzling blue and i use those to sparkle up my flowers a little bit uh you could just use plain old um clear glitter on them if you like and i think and some glues Oh, 
that's what else I use that I don't even have it out um, is my my tape let me grab that out here I'm going to use my this um, double si stick double sided tape um, for the borders for the black part and for the happy mother's day um, if you don't have this tape you don't want to get this tape you can use Tombow glue and some patience to let it dry and you can achieve the same effect and what else oh and my makeup brushes that I'm playing with and I'm going to use that to do my nice um, my nice delicate blended background on both the inside and on the card front I don't know if you can tell on the video but it's got just a just a touch of that um that coastal cabana ink on there just give it a little something and I also use that glitter pen I use the glitter pen to glitter my little sequins it's here so can you see it can you see it I don't know but it's there all right so let's get started on this card what should we start with um let's do flowers with my ink tense pencils let's get these little guys out here and I use the larger and the medium size uh, the larger and the medium I think I used what I used I used the small ones and the large ones okay neither one are really big but I used that's what I used I'm gonna do my I'm gonna use the uh, my uh, my large ones I'm going to use let's see well, I'll want, I think I'll use a sun yellow, I think the sun yellow for the centers. See, I have a swatch card. I recommend always doing a swatch card. And sea blue, maybe sea blue and bright blue, sea blue. I'll do sea blue. I don't remember anymore what color I used on these. I did these flowers quite a while ago and had them put aside. So I've got those and then I need my fuchsia for my for my smaller flowers. So let's see, where's the fuchsia one? Ah, there it is. But whenever you get something, swatch them out. And then that that gives you a little chart. You don't have to test them out every time you, you go to use them. I swatch everything. And I mean everything. Because first of all, I'm usually kind of excited about getting something new and getting ready to play with it. Now, I, I only need four flowers, so that's all I'm going to do so I'll just color in the centers on four of them and these ink tent pencils are I, I keep thinking I really really want to do different use different things to watercolor and I always end up saying well you know what if I want to watercolor I should probably just watercolor but these ink tents pencils are the best um, thing I've found so far to use instead of water actual watercolor. And I'm putting a good amount of color on here. Um, when these dry, these pencils stay, the, the color stays dry, meaning that if you get some water on it, it's not going to blotch and spot, um, which is nice. Uh, most other watercolor pencils and watercolors themselves will will reactivate as soon as, as soon as you put water on it. But these, once they dry, they're there forever. 
and they are actually kind of a dye-based pencil, hence the name, I guess, Ink Tense. So let me just... I'm not coloring the whole flower in, as you can see. I'm just doing, doing the outside here. But I want a lot of color on these, so I'm putting a lot of color on them. Oop, I missed the petal there. Okay, so now I'll take my aqua painter. Get a little water going there. And just... That's a little too much water. That's more than I want. I need to wipe that off. Let me grab a paper towel and get that up here. Okay. So you see, they, they become watercolors. Which would be, it would be more surprising if they didn't, right? Since they're supposed to be watercolor pen or watercolor pencils, they feel very nice going down too when when you're using them. Okay, so I've got all the pink parts activated. I'm going to do the yellow now. Okay, and now I'm going to go back because, like I said, I want a lot of color on these. I'm going to go back and while it's still wet, I'm going to add more color on just the, the, the tips of these flowers. I really want a lot of color. And you see how, okay, I did these two. I did not do these two yet. You see the, I don't know if you can see the difference there, but there is a difference. Maybe you just have to take my word for it. I'm not concerned about staying in the lines either because these are all going to get die cut. Okay. And then I'm going to put the, I'm just going to put this aside for the moment. I'm going to do the blue ones off camera because you don't need to see me do this on all of them I don't think okay so we got that done put that off on the side here and leave my blue pencil I'll leave all my pencils there I'll put them all away later okay so let's do some blending If I can find my papers again. All right, so we've got to do some blending on that one, and this one, and this one. And this one, I believe, is the one that goes on the inside of the card. And nope, it's this one. Okay, and this one is cut to four by six. This one is cut a little bit smaller because I only need it to to be big enough to go inside the frame here. So you could do both of them four by six and it would be fine. So I'm going to use my big blending brush. And I've got my Coastal Cabana ink. I have to look at it, make sure I'm saying the right name. Okay, so this one goes on the inside of the card. Pick up some ink here. I'm just going to rub this on my crafting mat here, get it all smoothed out. And I'm just going to add some of this Coastal Cabana right here to the center of the card. And you see how what a nice light blend I'm getting here and this is dye based inks and it's just so smooth it's lovely if you have a problem blending with the with dye based inks you really should check into getting some of these makeup brushes these are 
um, very much like the life-changing blending brushes. I forget who makes those, who puts them out. If you do a search on YouTube, you'll find a lot of videos about it. Now this piece here will go on the front of the card. So I'm just going to do random sections. I'm not doing all of it. And then I'm going to also emboss this. Okay, so I think that's enough. I got my ink brushes on Amazon. They cost me just under $9. So it's, it's not a huge investment. And they clean up wonderful. Watch this. There we go. I think my brush is probably clean now. Nice, right? Okay. Let's get the Coastal Cabana put away. And I'll get out my Granny Apple Green. And I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to put that with my embossing folder here. Because I've got to get embossed. And let's see where did my little sponge dauber go. I'm going to use my little sponge dauber. And I'm just going to get anything that's on here. It's going to become green. And you see, I'm just, I'm going way outside the lines here. Again, this is going to get die cut. And I'm going to get darker in some spots and lighter in other spots. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> All right. Now I'll get my, my Berry Burst marker. And there's just a little, there's just some little things here. that look like they should be like flower buds. So I'm just going to add a little color there. And then I'll be putting my sparkle on top of those. My, um, my crystal drops or glitter drops, whatever they are. Okay, so that's ready to be die cut. And, oh, one more thing I need to do. I've only got two minutes need to find my piece of black paper and get my piece of black paper here and my big old fat roll here this big roll is is like 27 yards long and it's five inches wide um, I got this on Amazon for I think it was around about forty dollars so maybe you don't want to invest that much in some double-sided tape. Uh, Stampin' Up! Has, has sheets that are smaller of the double-sided tape. And of course there's a lot less, less investment in there. But they work the same way. Um, ScorePal also has different widths of this. I have 2 inch tape. It cost me somewhere in around $20, so about half the price of this, but it's 27 yards long. Okay, so I've got that. Oh, let me put my little sticker back on here. I use that to help me locate the ends. So this is going to get die cut with these, and I'm using the 1x7. And then the 1x5 one for my 5x7 card. So that's going to get die cut. So I'm going to go do my die cutting. I'm going to finish coloring my flowers. I'm going to die cut those. We'll come back. We'll make beautiful flowers for on the card. Um, we'll put the card together. We'll have a great time. So go get a snack. Be right back. Well, I'm back from visiting with Mr. Big Shot. He lives on the other side of my craft room. And um, I realized I kind of glossed over doing um, some of this die cutting. 
especially using this double stick tape on here. So I left this as it was coming out of my die cutting machine. I already got some of them done, but I wanted to show you this. I like to use, I like to use just the plain old um, delicate um, painter's tape. Some people like, I've heard some people say they like the yellow frog tape, but I just use this. I used to use just plain masking tape. And you just tap this off on your clothes a few times, get it a little linty, and it's it works nice. Okay, so I've got my pieces here. And what I do to remove this from the mold, because it's got sticky stuff on it, you know? So I take my dye brush and go over this with my dye brush. As you see, a lot of the pieces are starting to come out. Um, most of the time, it doesn't doesn't even cut through this the backing on the tape. So then I take it, I just peel it up like so. Take it out of my my die. There's a little tiny piece right there. I'll get that out. Just roll it with my my die brush. I don't know where that little piece went, but wherever it went, it stuck down on it because it's got the tape on it. And then I just get the end here and peel off the backing. And even more pieces now are going to stick to that backing. You see? There's one little one that escaped. And actually everything but one little bit here in the corner came out. And I'll just tap it with my finger like this. And that usually picks up on my finger. This one, of course, is going to be stubborn. But you just get that last little piece out. And we're ready to go with this. Then for the Happy Mother's Day part, same deal. Just peel them out. Oh, see, mine, mine didn't cut through all the way on this one, you see. So I stick it down on my craft sheet here. And if I peel this up, ah, it didn't stick. I want to get that center of the A out. Let me try sticking it on my finger. Nope. It's going to be stubborn too. Of course it is because I'm doing the video right now. I've got that ready to go. And you do have to be a little careful with this because these are these are pretty dainty. I have my happy. I'll get that with my dye brush. Oh. It's going to stick to my finger and peel out. Here we go. Here we go. All right, let's see that. Oh, see, now the center of the A stuck. See, that's how it works most times. It's a, it's a little fiddly, but I, then I don't have to sit and wait for Tombow glue to dry, which is the alternative. this out, work all those little pieces out. And I have a couple little bits on those. Yeah, if I wasn't using this tape, what I would do is I would flip these over, put a little Tombow glue out on my on my table and sponge it on the back and you have to be very careful you don't want to get it on the front because Tombow glue stays sticky forever then you wait for it to dry 
That little piece didn't seem to cut all the way. I'm just going to snip that with my scissors. And you wait for it to dry and then it becomes like this. It's sticky on the back and you can you can put it down. You don't have to worry about ink oozing out. And I'll just set that, put that down over here. All right, so we have all our little sticky bits ready to go. And I ran my flowers through also my um, my big shot while I was over there um, through with the flower shaping mold and this is very easy to use also you just there's little dents here and little feet here the little feet go in the little dents there's a slash corner up the top here that's where this corner goes I put my flowers face down in the mold and then sandwiched it between um, my two cut my two plates on my big shot without the platform this takes the place of the platform okay so now I have all my little flowers here you know I don't think they even require any additional shaping I think I'll just put them on the card as they are I got this I did this with my embossed it with my sequins my what is it cascading sequins or something like that scattered sequins and when you put that through make sure that your sequins are either popping up or popping down I like them popping up myself so you want to put it with this. See, it's got the Sizzix and the Stampin' Up. This wants to be, you want that to touch your, the top of your cardstock. Okay? So if I had put it in this way, it would have been wrong. So I want it this way, and that's how I put it in. Put it in just like this. Closed it up. Got my sequins popping up. All right, well, let me move these out of the way here. And this, I die cut this also. And we'll, we'll work on these, these little pieces here. So you just take these. line them up like so I like to hold my fingers like this and get this corner down right and then I can just line it up just like this there we go and that's ready and I'm going to stop the video and do the others so you don't have to watch it so now I'm going to flip these all over. I'm going to lay them out like they're going to go down on the card. I'm going to tape each of these edges together. Oh, I found that little piece. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just lay them out like this so that the, the edges are butted up against each other. And this is just, just any old tape you can use. It doesn't matter. And just tape those together. Do, 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 do. I feel like I should be giving you some important information here. Um, can't think of anything. I've been trying to keep my Mother's Day cards um, not highly dimensional. I, you know, you want a little dimension, a little texture going on on your cards. I've been I've been trying to keep them kind of flat so that so that you can you can mail them. Oh, my 
bit of my tape is showing here. Let me just trim that off. Okay. Now I'm going to put the, um, the foam on the back here that I had pre-cut. I used the thicker craft foam. You could use the thinner craft foam. It really doesn't matter. Um, the, um, the thinner, of course, would make it make it even flat, a little flatter. Might go through the mail a little better. But I think this will be fine. It really isn't all that thick. What is that? Maybe a, maybe an eighth of an inch there. Get this all set, and that can go. And we'll be ready to put that on the front of the card. We'll put the piece with the sequins down first. If you hear jingling and stuff, that's my dog here. She always has. She she loves. to say, let's make a video. She comes running. She. I don't know what is so wonderful about sitting here in my craft room while I'm videoing, but she just loves to do that. Maybe because I lock the cats out. <laughs> she gets to be special for a little while. Okay, so this is all set to go on the front of the card. We'll put this down. Next, I'll just center that on the card. I'm using the Art, the, um, art Glitter Dries Clear Glue here. And before I go any further, I'm going to take my my glitter marker I'm, or my glitter pen here and just dab a little glitter. Got to have a little glitter on all these sequins. This goes pretty fast. I'm not doing, not doing anything fancy. I'm just putting a little little bit of glitter on there. This is nice. This is a lot like the, um, oh, what's the other one that's glittery? I have that too, but it makes it more um, a goldish glitter. It's, um, let's see, I have it right here. Most, most of the stuff I use a lot. It's the, um, Oh, come on. It doesn't even tell me what it is on, on here. And I can't remember right offhand. If you've watched any card making videos at all, you probably, you're probably shouting at me right now. It's such and such. And Wink of Stella. That's what it is. So if you have a Wink of Stella and you don't have these, you could use that. No reason you can't. Or for that matter, you could just leave your sequins with no glitter at all. all right? It's your card. Do what you like. <laughs> for that matter, you could just take plain old cardstock and put real sequins on it. But I had this this um, embossing folder. I was been dying to use it. Finally found a good card that to use it on. All right. But now this has to go on the card front. There we go. Oh, this is getting lovely. Okay, and then now I'll put my Happy Mother's Day on. Just get my little sticky Oh, I missed a little piece there in the that one P. And there we go. I'm gonna put it at a little bit of an angle. There. All my little bits are stuck down there now. 
Brothers comes next. And day. Then we got that done. Oh, you know, we have to stamp and do the inside, too. I'm going to do that before we put our flowers on. I have that all set up here in my Stamparatus. I have a Mini Misty. And I have one of the Tim Holtz stamp positioners. And I like them both very much. But I really, really like the Stamparatus. I love it that it has these plates. It has lots of these plates. I can get I got extra plates. And I can have things all lined up. I have my sentiments all ready to go. And there's just no worries. Let's see, I need to do this again. That's not near dark enough for me. This is where a stamp positioner comes in really handy. You can just stamp it as many times as you want. This sentiment, a mother is a mother is always close to your heart, whether near in miles or far apart. I thought that was quite nice. So that's what I used. So there we go. That looks good now. I'll just put that aside. I'll clean that up later. So let's put this on the inside. We're almost finished. Just center this on the inside of the card. Got a little color there. Nice big spot to sign it on the bottom. This is actually quite nice without anything else on it, isn't it? You could skip flowers all together and just, just uh, move Happy Mother's Day down a little further. But we're going to put flowers on it. So, I'm going to put I'm going to put this right on my card front. Then I don't have to worry about where it's going to go on the leaves. I just have this little bit of foam there. And then I can just put a little glue on here. It wants to move. And I'll put, let's see. How do I want it to go? I want it to go, I think, that way. So, I'll put a little glue just on these bottom leaves here. I'm not going to glue everything down. I'm going to leave some of it loose. Okay, so there's our base. We didn't do any shaping on that at all. That just went down right as it was. And we'll bring our flowers in here. I like to put the larger flowers down first. So let's see, I'll put one there. One here. Turn them at little different angles. That's how they would be if they were they were growing in nature, so That's how I put them, put them on. It looks a little, looks more natural. Don't want them all lined up like little soldiers marching across your card, right? Okay, so I've got my blue ones down. I'll put some of my pink ones on here. I think that's all I need right there. Put that one right 
there. And I'll put this one right here. And you know what? I don't think I even need my fourth one. I don't know where I would put it. I think that's plenty. So our card is finished. Now, if you've liked this video, then be sure to hit that like button that's down below here. Um, there's a subscribe button down there, too, if you want to see more of my videos. And hit the subscribe button. And they'll come up in the little right-hand column there with a little new tag on it as I post them. Um, if you have any questions or comments, then that's down there below down below there too you can you can leave a question or a comment and I will get back to you I'm pretty quick about it I guess I mean it's not real time but it's certainly within a day anyway I don't think I've ever gone longer than 24 hours um, and of course I'll list all of the tools and materials that I use down there also so there's a lot of stuff going on down there, down below this video. <laughs> so I hope you all had a good time with me today. And y'all take care, stay safe, and happy stamping. Oops, wait, 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 don't go away yet. I forgot to put the glitter on the flowers. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this just on the edges of the flowers. There. I went to take the photograph afterwards of my of the cards. And I said, oh no, I didn't glitter them. And I'll put a little glitter, this glitter on the, um, these little, little bud things too. These drops are nice because they, um, you can put your glitter on and you don't have to worry about it coming off. I bang them down like that to get the product out of the little schnozzle on them. That way it doesn't, it doesn't get all clogged up the next time I go to use them. It's ready to go. This one's spitting a little bit. I should have tested that before I went right to my card. But, oh well. It didn't hurt anything. There we go. One last little flower. And now our card is finished. That makes all the difference in the world, that little bit of glitter. So, I'll see you next time.